Hey everybody, I'm announcing a special giveaway for anyone who signs up to become a member on the Hello America channel. More on that at the end of this video. Hey members, stick around for the end of this video so you can see what the monthly giveaway is for this month. Last month was the guitar and Ronette won. The Mac 0311 No Kill Shelter of the Week is Faithful Friends Animal Shelter in Salisbury, North Carolina. All right, you Red Step Stacker family, here we are at the infamous Air Force Museum with all these amazing planes here. And the one that caught my eye and for some reason reminded me of Red has to be this 24 Strawberry Bitch. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Today's opening was brought to you by members Ronette Coleman and Mr. Brown. And when he's in town, stuff's going down. <laughs> this episode is exactly why I love what I do. Today, not only are we going to take a look at the most haunted plane at the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, we are also going to help correct a little history with a couple people who are misunderstanding their grandfather's role in this airplane. And the most asked question about the strawberry bitch, whose girlfriend or wife is that on the side of the plane? Let's straighten out the pilot problem. To the person that tells the story that his grandfather flew this plane, it was shot down. He saved eight of the passengers and the co-pilot stole his parachute. Then he found the co-pilots. That might have happened to your grandfather, but it didn't happen the one or two times he might have flown this airplane. The plane was assigned to pilot Daniel Rice, who put... 143 hours on this plane. After that last battle in mid-December 1943, you would only find in the roster rotating pilots and crews. Now, Daniel Rice died in 2016, but he was fully interviewed and his story was captured for history. And it was not uncommon for a base to have a military film crew that would go out or go up and film what was going on so the higher-ups can make better decisions on their next move. For the first time in the history of the world, you are going to hear Mr. Rice's accounts of what happened lined up with the footage that was shot that day in that battle, and most likely on the Strawberry Bitch, because although some had racy artwork, this one had a very racy word in large letters. Now you're going to hear Siri's voice reading Daniel's words as I match up the damage that he explains that they went through on that flight. If I had a coffee cup, I could have reached in through the holes and dipped out the fuel. In retrospect, it seems to me that as I was watching both of my element mates go down in flames, that was the quintessential time and place for the expression, there but for the grace of God go I. I certainly am at a loss for any other explanation of why they went down, and we did not. I remember to the good size jagged hole in the left vertical stabilizer at attachment point to the horizontal tail surface, where other explosive shells had found us, and at least one non-explosive one found us too. Our top gunner engineer was injured about the left side of his face, and head by fragments from the shell burst and hold plexiglass, but fortunately the wounds were not deep nor life-threatening. After a short healing period he was back in the harness, and pulling his share of the load again. So you're looking at the turret from the top view. The two black bars at the top of the screen are the guns by his left and right hand. And the number seven in these numbers running here is where the top of his head would be. You'd be looking down at the crown of his head. So this footage is listed from the exact same battle that pilot Daniel Rice's flight log indicates he was in. I've confirmed. 
Now let's talk about the strawberry bitch. That air battles in December, but two months earlier in September, the captain asked the engineer to talk to the crew and ask what they want to name this plane. The engineer came up with the name Strawberry Bitch. Whether he asked the crew or not, we'll never know. And to clue you in on another little military secret is these ladies weren't wearing any clothes. <laughs> they had to paint those on if some high-ranking official from the States was coming in. Otherwise... Nobody had a problem with it. What happens in Africa stays in Africa. The most common ghost story about the strawberry bitch is visitors visiting the museum during business hours experiencing while viewing the strawberry bitch footsteps inside of the airplane and also claimed was the rattling of the machine guns as if someone was holding the handles and just making metal clink. And the scariest and most invasive story is that of a maintenance or janitor who was not inside the plane, but outside the plane and said strawberry bitch in a negative connotation. Somehow some ghost took offense and slapped him in the face. And now we ask ourselves, First, if there actually is a ghost, is it the engineer? And is the redhead on the side of the plane his wife, ex-wife, girlfriend, or ex-girlfriend? My vote is for yes and no. Yes, he's the most likely contender, probably having the most uh, emotional attachment to the airplane, seeing that he named it and was physically injured, I'm sure a bit disfigured plus the old wise tale of these ladies being some girl back home they have a crush on or they had to leave behind the woman that was mascotted to be the strawberry bitch was actually a varga model from esquire magazine alfredo vargas painted all these gals and was ripped off by esquire magazine later going to work for playboy magazine till he passed away in 72 this Varga model came out in October 1943, and the pilot recalled that the pinup model was painted on the plane a couple of flights later. In the Strawberry Bitch's career, it really spent its first 100 hours flying from base to base getting stuff fixed, and then it got shoved into war, and maybe prematurely. But Daniel Rice brought everybody home in one piece. And the unnamed engineer came up with a great name and may be the author of a lot of great ghost stories. Either way, I'd like to say to all of the ghosts at the National Air Force Museum, you've all served your country well. You're all free to go home. Peace and love worldwide. Love your life before your life lives you. I'm doing a t-shirt giveaway for September. And you can still get in on it now. It starts now. Anyone who's become a member of my channel from Father's Day until my birthday, late September, last week at September, anyone who becomes a member is eligible for this t-shirt. If we get 25 people, I'll do two t-shirts. If we do 50 people, I'll do three t-shirts. That's a lot of t-shirts for new members of any level. You pick the t-shirt, you pick the size. If you want a coffee mug instead, that's fine. But that's not all. If you become a member this week, today, go on any laptop and go to my channel on YouTube, click join, it opens a menu and it gives you your options. You didn't join when you click join, it just gives you info. Now for my 23 and growing members, here's what I got for you. I got you stuff from the museum, including... <laughs> a strawberry bitch pin, and a very interesting story about Space Force. And you're about to find out that those documents that uh, somebody got taken from them have a lot to do with Space Force. Boy, they sure don't make pennies like they used to. <laughs> 
and just a good old-fashioned pin from the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. So join, become a member. Members, these are my gifts to you. And don't forget those unused toothpicks. (laughs) 